What up folks, welcome back to Delboy's Garage. Now tonight is a very simple task, got home from work just now and mail after mail, I've seemed to get a lot of requests lately for brake pads. A lot of people are asking, can you show me how to change brake pads? It's a common thing, they're a consumable part like tyres and they can be expensive. If you go to a dealer, they're going to charge you about 70 to 100 pounds to change two sets of brake pads in the front of your bike. That's a lot of money. It doesn't have to cost that much because you can do it yourself. It's a very simple task. You just need to take some care to make sure you do it all up again properly afterwards. Yes indeed, obviously, brake pads, brakes, dealing with anything, stripping down a set of brakes, it does strike fear into people because they're just worried. It's a very serious matter. So tonight I'm going to show how simple it is. The anatomy of a brake caliper is very straightforward and I'm going to try and rip through it in that magic seven minutes. Now because we've got the guys on Discovery on board now, uh, their videos are restricted to seven minutes on the Discovery website and normally as you know I like to ramble on and yarn on for hours and describe every little bit but they are having to cut quite a lot out now what I don't want them doing when they get this ready for Discovery I don't want it having a a essential parts of the video chopped out in editing because they don't really know what to cut and what not so we're going to do it in two halves we're going to do this waffly bit at the beginning explain what we're up to and then we're going to stop the video start again and we're going to roll on and try and do this hopefully in seven to ten minutes for one caliper and the principle of that is showing you how simple it is it really isn't hard changing a set of brake pads I'm not going to yarn on and I'm not going to do the cleaning side of it I'm not going to re refurbish them and do all the cutting and cleaning that simply I want to show you how to take pads out put the new ones back in the things you have to do to get that all working correctly and the precautions to take simple as that so here we go brake pads front of your bike very straightforward, whether it's a Bandit, a Hayabusa, Harley Davidson, whatever you have, they're pretty much all generic. So stick around, stay tuned, let's see what happens. Right, today what we're going to do is change the brake pads. It's a very straightforward job, shouldn't be as scary as it is, but if I can show you now, hopefully you can pick up something from it. So, kit list, what we need for the job is a pair of grips, some sort of grips or a G-clamp, socket, get the caliper off, big old fat screwdriver, some thin nose pliers, 5mm allen key, some copper grease and a drop of brake fluid. Now, get that out of the way so it's safe. Most of the tools out of the way. And the first task, before we do anything, first task is this pin holds the pads in and it's quite tight. So while everything's bolted up and you get a purchase on it, take your allen key, pop it in and just take my knuckles off just break that. You don't have to take it out because there's a split pin there, it won't come out yet. So just break that so that later on we've got access. Then we take a socket and then just break the bolts. Now I haven't touched these since the last time they went in. So they should come out okay. There we are, that's the box out. Now, last time I put them in, a bit of copper slip on, you see there, they've come out nicely. If you don't copper slip them with all the water and the crud and the heat, they will rust. Now, caliper's free, but because the pads run about half a millimetre above the disc, that's a bit awkward to get off. So a little trick, grab hold of the caliper, and you've got to rotate it that way, back and forth, just gently, not much, and don't lean on it, don't bend the disc or anything. Just a little bit of force, there we are, makes more space. And we've got the caliper off. And as we can see in there, there's the pads, and that's what we're going to change today. So, this pin on the back has to come out. Quick tip here while I'm just fiddling around with the split pin. If you're not sure how all this goes back together, remember two things. Firstly, you've got one the other side. So if you're going to put it back together afterwards, and you're not sure how it went, you can very easily refer to the other side or if you're not sure why not take your mobile phone before you take it apart take a photograph of it keep the, keep the phone in your pocket when you come to put it back together if you get a bit lost can't work out where it went what you got to do is refer to your photograph take the split pin out okay little split pin goes back there and then key and this is really as simple as it is now wind that pin this this pin goes straight through both well, on the back here, this thing I'm pressing on now, that's just a little spring. It's like a little spring plate that holds everything in place and stops the pads 
move it around. Now when we get that out, here we go, retract the pin right the way out, we'll clean that in a minute. And there we can see everything's free. But before we actually drop them free, you come back around the other side and we're going to use to our advantage the fact that those old pads are going in the bin. Now these pistons, these bits here, that's the brake pistons there, these circular cylinders. And because these pads are worn out, these pistons have been pushed out further and therefore the new fat pads going in won't be enough room. So we need to push these pistons back. Now a nice simple way to do it, remember these pads are going in the bin. Don't do this with pads that are not. Stick a big fat screwdriver in between and just rotate it. And as you can see, they just push back. As long as they're not seized, they will just push back. Don't do this to a brake pad that you're going to use because it will toast them. Push them right back out of the way. So we've used that to push those pads, those pistons right back in. Then spin it over, drop the pads out. There we go. Now as you can see, they are pretty much worn out. I can't stress enough that you've got about half a millimeter of pad material there. That's all that's left. Let's just grab the new ones. Now the main point here is, don't let them go onto the metal. If you allow the bike to run the pads right down, so they're right on the metal. You're, you're then trying to stop the bike by rubbing a piece of metal against a piece of metal. And it's called, uh, I can't remember the exact term for it, I think it's like a spot welding, where it actually welds itself to, then breaks free and you get a fat score line around the disc. So if you run that material, this soft pad material, right out onto the metal, you will start to actually trash the discs. And why do that? So there's a fresh one, and there's a dead one. You can see the difference. That's what you call value for money. They are well and truly gone. Now they're not sided, they're not left or right, they're the same. So there's the old ones, there's the new ones. Before we go any further, at this point you spray all your brake cleaner in, toothbrush, clean it all out, and if they're not moving freely, if when you put that screwdriver in and twist it, they don't push back freely, then get some brake cleaner in and free them off. But at this point, I think they're fine. Now if they're not right back, use your big pair of grips, get in there, and you can just Squeeze them back that last little bit. Now obviously this is a raggedy rat bike and it doesn't matter if I get a little notch or a mark on the brake caliper. But if you've got a nice shiny bike, obviously wrap a cloth around it before you do all that. So new pads. First one in. Second one in. Spin it over. There's your pads in place, obviously with the squishy side in. Let me take the little spring and remember it went that way. Again, remember if you took a photograph, you should be able to work that out. And make sure that that hole, that hole, that hole, and that hole all line up. Take the pin, I'm just gonna let them rest there for a minute. A piece of old emery cloth and clean that pin because they do slide back and forth on the pin, not by much, but they do slide back and forth a bit. So just rub off the crud, really. Don't put grease on it. Now we just push the pin through, through the first pad, press that spring, that back spring piece in, through the second pad, into the hole. Allen key. Do that up. Now again, these pins can seize in there so tight that when you go to get them out, remember there's only a five mil Allen key, you mince that out, then you've got a world of trouble getting that thing out, you really have. You don't need to hang on it like a monkey, it will not come out. Take a split pin, pop split pin back in. He's a tiny little fella as well. And I don't know, to be honest, whether this split pin, I would, in a, in a, I haven't got any at the moment, but I'm gonna get some of those little R clips, because I don't like split pins. Cut. So there we are, split pins in, all assembled. Come around the front. Open the pads up so you get the big gap in them. Spin them back round, pop them on the disc. Now you can, if you wish, you can spread some copper slip or copper grease on the back of the pads and that will absorb the high frequency vibration that leads to squeaking. But personally, I don't often do it because I don't get brakes that squeak. If I did, I would. Okay, a little bit of copper slip on these bolts just to stop them seizing. In. There we go. 
the top one. And we'll watch it again. And that pretty much is your brake pads changed. There are some very important, well, one extremely important point I want to make here, and that is don't lean on these. And I say it a lot, but I can't say it enough in this because you put in a, a fine threaded steel bolt into an aluminium casting and you will mince it. So what you do is put them in, do them up, give them a little bit of feel and when they feel like they've stopped, that's it. Now, remember the other day, remember our little trick with this? Get your nail varnish and you put a dot on the bolt and a dot on the body, on the fork leg, like that. And then for the next couple of days, you can just keep an eye on those dots and make sure they stay aligned. You don't have to start using torque wrenches. If you want to use a torque wrench, you use a torque wrench. That's entirely up to you. But I've never bothered because I've never needed to. Just do them up and do the dot trick. It works. Now, the last thing, and I think one of the most important things, I really mean this, I can't say it enough, pump them out. What I mean by that is, what I mean by that is, remember, you push those pistons back. Now normally pads run with about a millimetre of space and that's all they need. And when you pull that lever in, that's about all they move. They don't move much more. So when you've pushed them back to here, you pull the lever in, nothing's going to happen. You're going to hit the back of whatever it is that you're going up behind. So before you go any further, watch this, pump it out. Pump those pads back out. So you're pumping those pistons back out so that the pad contacts the disc. If you fail to do that, well let's say, if you fail to do it and you get away with it, you'll never do it again. That fear, that terror, when you come to stop for the first time, you pull the brake in, the lever goes bang, straight against the bar, boom, nothing. Honestly, everything evacuates. That ain't funny, so make sure you pump that out. The final thing I want to make a point on is the fluid. Now, at this point, another very important factor, when you see here, check your fluid level. Check that that's correct. Now that disappeared. When my brake pads, we're down and right out. All the fluid is down in the system. It's pushing those pistons out to meet the disc because the pads are worn out. When you put new fat pads in, you push the pistons back as we've just done and it pushes all the fluid back up here. Simple as that. And I'm going to show you very quickly how to replace or top up the fluid just in case you need to or even take some out. There's two ways to do it. So final little bit, let's show you how to do that. Right, this was a specific request from my mate who got the 650 bandit. I'll show you. Two screws on top of your reservoir. Get a decent quality precision screwdriver. Not a big fat old horrible rusty thing. Get it in. Give it a tap so it's home. And very gently just undo those screws. They shouldn't be tight. If they are tight, don't keep leaning on them until you mince them. Just tap the screwdriver in until you don't. Once you mince those screws, it's quite hard to get them out afterwards. But we're going to assume yours come out like that. Screws there. Now, inside the cap, we have a plastic board which holds it still. And then we have the rubber diaphragm. Now this thing, you can see there, the way that squishes up and down. When you release your brakes, as you pump downwards, that pushes the fluid out. Something needs to suck the fluid back up into the reservoir, and it's this this rubber thing and that's why that needs to be not split now inside there as you can see is the fluid now mine is the correct level so I don't need to top that up it's a little dark but I replaced it about nine months ago so it's okay for now now what you need to do if that's too much because you've pushed it back up just get a little bit of kitchen paper like that dip it in and like one sheet on the telly it absorbs plenty <laughs> one sheet does plenty and that, that'll take out a little bit of the fluid, which actually puts mine bang on. If you need to top up, then top up from your bottle, so that's fine. Then we just pop that back on, make sure it's back in place. Put a little plastic board on, which holds it all still. And you can see this squishiness around there. Make sure you get a seal all the way around. Pop the cap on, correct way around, so that the writing is towards you. And then the screws back in. Okay. Now, again, I'll stress, tiny steel thread into a tiny aluminium casting, so don't hang off it. Just do it up wrist tight, I mean it, just like that. Two fingers with your hands, like that. Don't do them up, you don't need to, really don't, they won't leak. 
If that rubber is sealed, it won't leak. Don't go leaning on it. Then get a cloth. Obviously, you'll have a nice shiny bike and wipe all that brake fluid off so it doesn't drip on your paintwork and sod so it up. There we go, brake pads. It's as simple as that, it really is. There's nothing mystical about it. There's nothing scary about it. Just make sure you do everything up that you undid and you make sure it stays done up by keeping an eye on it with the two dot trick. The other thing I will say is that your brakes will feel woolly for the first 30, 40 miles. The reason is that your old pads have kind of wobbles and curves in them that match the discs. They're a kind of perfect pair matched. You're putting in a new pad that's dead flat, so it's only going to touch at certain points. Only by, only microscopically, but you will get issues where when you first use those pads, they'll feel a bit woolly, but don't worry, they will, they will improve as time goes on. The other side of it is you might want to bleed the brakes through, you might want to use this opportunity, you might want to clean all the calipers, you might want to grease everything. There's a lot more to do in it, you take the time, take a couple of hours over it, refurbish everything. It doesn't hurt to do that. What I wanted to show you today was just how to take the pads out, put the new ones in, the actual anatomy of doing the job. And finally, I'd say with any job you do like this, no matter what it is, don't make the first ride on those new pads your ride to work the next morning when you might be late or have a problem. Take for a test ride now. I've just been out for a quick ride round and they're absolutely fine. Because a test ride is important about any job. Any mechanic will tell you that. You must test ride something to make sure what you've done is correct. And when you get back, visual check round everything, make sure it's all still as it should be. So there you go. That was it. Brake pads. It's as simple as that. Thanks for tuning in and watching the Woods Garage. Ride safe. Sort your brakes out. See you next time.